Friends, listen, what is the point of having great gear if you're just gonna leave it in your camera bag? The Z9 has been stuck to my hands from the moment that I bought it. Additionally, the 500 millimeter PF has been permanently attached to the Z9. Now that's kind of a shame because I own some pretty fantastic lenses. For instance, the Nikon 105 macro and the 20 millimeter 1.8. Fantastic lenses, both of them world-class. But here's the problem, I never use them. I never put them on the camera. So this weekend I'm gonna challenge myself to use all of my equipment. I'm gonna use my whole camera bag, which is what we should all be doing. So sit back, grab yourself a cup of coffee or a tea, and let's go see if we can make some pretty images. So Katie, you don't have a macro lens and you don't have a wide angle lens, but you have this telephoto that goes from 100 to 400. Do you think you can uh, accept this challenge and be able to do a landscape, macro, and bird shot with I one already lens? did all three of those today. You're I done? just got a picture of a fly fisherman with the mountains behind him. Beautiful landscape shot. Then I got a blue bird shot and I just got a butterfly. So you're saying challenge over? I don't over? need three lenses. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> One lens. All right, okay, stop bragging. <laughs> I'm done. I'm gonna try to get even better ones. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right, let's go take some pictures. Luckily, we had a beautiful weekend and the photo opportunities were abundant. We arrived at our destination late in the morning, which is an ideal time to get in some macro photography. That is one thing I love about macro photography. I can be a little lazy in my approach. Most of the time I find a subject within 50 feet of the truck, and the subjects are usually very cooperative. The plant sits still, and if you look closely, you'll find some cool textures to photograph. I'm happy to say I grabbed a few decent shots in the first 20 minutes. Katie, however, she seemed more interested in just playing in the grass. She did get that one butterfly, but I suspect we'll see more out of her when she finds something more interesting to photograph. Landscape photography has always baffled me. And I think I know why. I just need something to aim at. It's beautiful to look out over those gorgeous vistas, but give me that one thing to focus on. The, the cliff line runs along that edge. You know what I'm saying? Like it kind of trails off that way. Maybe that's just the way my mind works. Isolate something and concentrate on it intently. If you're looking at the whole picture, you're not paying attention to the details. And me, I like the details. Perhaps I just like seeing part of my life framed in the scene. And that's probably why most of my landscape images look a lot like snapshots. Katie, on the other hand, looks incredibly focused. Knowing Katie, it's likely not the scenery that has her attention. It looks to me like she's made a friend. Now this is where I envy Katie's camera setup. I got out of the truck with a 20 millimeter lens, thus limited opportunities, wide angle or nothing. Katie, however, is equipped for all situations. I'm sure she fully intended to photograph that gorgeous landscape. but opportunity came knocking in the form of a cute little marmot. Katie was ready and I was not. So I just sat back and enjoyed Katie while she made some beautiful images. Score one for versatility. It wasn't until I got home that I realized she'd been snapping some pretty nice landscape images as well. 
So yeah, Katie's right. She doesn't need three lenses. On to bird photography. Exploring the back roads presented us with a lot of magical moments. However, like I've said in the past, seeing something beautiful and making beautiful images is not the same. We count ourselves amongst the fortunate to have laid eyes on these beautiful creatures. I've learned through experience that if you spend enough time exploring those old back roads and fence lines, you're bound to eventually have some amazing opportunities. And luckily, we found ourselves with one of those close encounters. Right there, 30 feet off the edge of the road, two stunning great horned owls. Okay, let's talk cameras for a second. This is where I really expected the Z9 to just pull away. After all, I was shooting a $5,500 professional camera. That camera cost more than Katie's entire setup. Plus, I have this 500mm prime lens. Well, the results, they just say it all. We spent the better part of two evenings photographing birds from the window of the truck, and the results continued to make me question some of my gear decisions. I guess what I'm saying has been said a thousand times. Gear matters, but at some point, you have to ask yourself how much you really need an extra 12 megapixels or an extra 12 frames per second. Don't get me wrong, the Z9 is nice, really nice. And I'm incredibly guilty of liking nice things. Listen, there's no reason to regret buying nice professional equipment. However, if you find yourself with a little gear envy like I've done in the past, take comfort in knowing that Katie, who still barely understands how to expose an image properly, photographed the exact same birds as me and the image quality was nearly indistinguishable from mine. Man, it's a wonderful time to be a photographer. And if gear is your thing, there is no shortage of fantastic cameras. Let's be real though. You still have to wake up early. You still have to find the subjects. There will never be a substitute for time and effort. But it's okay. You can get excited about gear. It's fun to geek out about that stuff. This new gear is making it easier and easier to get great images. The more keepers you get, the more enjoyable the experience. Just remember though, the gear will come and go. Your state-of-the-art gear will soon be out of date and there will be a new shiny toy that you'll have to start saving up for. I know Katie didn't buy her camera in hopes of getting the sharpest images or the fastest frame rates. Like we always say, it's about the experience. Our honest hope is to encourage and inspire you to get outside and take some pictures. Make a connection with those beautiful spaces and share it with someone. This is an incredibly fun hobby. Hey, overall it was a wonderful weekend to get out and use that equipment. It was fun to dust off that macro and wide angle lens as well. And if you're wondering who the winner was in the A7 IV versus Z9 challenge, well, you can't really tell looking at the pictures on YouTube, but those Z9 images are sweet. However, the Sony a7 IV is about 97% of the performance at less than 50% of the cost. 
Yeah, that's not bad. Not bad at all. 